Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. One reason cited by the CIA for the extreme torture they conducted is that they were swept up in the urgency of trying to figure out who was responsible for the 9-11 attacks. Also, that they needed to find out quickly if there were going to be any further attacks on the U.S. But if you take the timing of the extreme torture tactics conducted by the CIA and the military contractors, it tells a different story. Our next guest, Patrick Coburn, writes, the CIA tortured al-Qaeda suspects because it wanted evidence that Saddam Hussein was linked to 9-11 in order to justify the invasion of Iraq in 2003. Here to elaborate on all of this is Patrick Coburn. Patrick Coburn is the author of The Jihadist Return, ISIS, and the New Sunni Uprising. He's also a correspondent for The Independent of London. Thank you so much for joining us, Patrick. Thank you. Patrick, you wrote that CIA tortured al-Qaeda suspects because it wanted evidence that Saddam Hussein was linked to 9-11. What evidence do we have of that link? Yeah, there's fairly good evidence that this was a prime motive for uh, torturing the suspects. Um, the, I mean, one explanation given uh, in the last uh, week or so has been that the CIA and other security agencies were desperate to see if there was going to be a follow-up attack following 9-11. Uh, but this doesn't really ring true. Uh, the time they were torturing people was the end of 2002, March 2003. It was the run-up and the beginning of the uh, invasion of Iraq. And this is confirmed by people, um, doctors and others who were at Guantanamo at the time or were uh, in intelligence officers who were well informed about what was uh, happening and why. And they say, yes, that, you know, there was concern that there might be a follow-up attack. But the pressure from, a to uh, from the top and the second reason they were torturing people was a desperation to get a link between al-Qaeda and Saddam Hussein, which didn't exist. Uh, and the CIA could have told the Bush administration early on didn't exist uh, because uh, the jihadis in Iraq were blood enemies of Saddam Hussein. He had a lot of them in prison. Um, so it was never likely to be there. But there had been various sort of propaganda um, efforts. Uh, there had been various articles in influential magazines in the U.S. saying that there was a link. Uh, between al-Qaeda and Saddam. So this uh, was certainly a prime motive for uh, torturing uh, these people. So this was a time when the Bush administration was preparing for war, shock and awe in Iraq, which some people link to the oil business that the Bush administration came from rather than the 9-11 attacks. It is a time when they were also looking to prove that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Um, can you elaborate on this for us? That's correct, yes. Um, the, uh, these were the two justifications for invading Iraq. Um, and uh, the Al-Qaeda connection, although, you know, it was kind of absurd to anybody who knew Iraq or knew anything about Al-Qaeda, uh, and indeed was an invention, but it, it convinced a lot of people at the moment of the invasion of Iraq. Polls show that a majority of uh, people in America thought there was some connection between 9-11 and Spain, uh, that there was a connection. Other polls show there was a connection between al-Qaeda and the Iraqi government. Um, and there were other efforts um, which have s since been exposed. Uh, you know, there was meant to be uh, a meeting between uh, one of the leaders of the uh, hijackers on 9-11 uh, with uh, uh, an Iraqi uh, in uh, Prague, in uh, the Czech Republic. Uh, this was exposed as being false because 
the guy, Mohammed Atta, was, I think, in Florida, was in the United States at the time, and his calls were recorded and uh, so forth. So it just couldn't be true. But these, there was a very sort of strenuous uh, propaganda effort to uh, prove the connection, um, and it very largely succeeded at the time. Right. The propaganda machine was so severe that they were going to go into the extent of breaking international laws and national laws in order to attain this information. Is there evidence in the uh, fire, um, uh, the, the torture report uh, that uh, alludes to the or supports the position that you are taking here? Well, there is in a report, but there are there's a report that people have forgotten about, which is another Senate report. I think it was the Armed Services Report, in Senate Armed Services Report in 2009, that has this very interesting information, um, quotes from uh, um, a doctor in particular who was uh, uh, at Guantanamo, who was interviewed by Army investigators in 2006. Uh, at the instigation of the Inspector General. Uh, the, so there's evidence there as to what has happened. But it, 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 there's, the present report uh, avoids going into the issue of motivation, uh, unfortunately, um, and focuses on what happened uh, and the uh, gruesome details of what happened. Uh, so. People haven't really been looking at the motivation, and I think that the uh, CIA in their public statements have been uh, again and again emphasizing the atmosphere of the time in, uh, in uh, after 9-11, uh, the need to see if there was uh, going to be follow-up attacks and so forth, and they've shied away from this very important uh, uh, other motive, perhaps more important other motive, uh, for torturing people and trying to uh, extract confessions, saying, yes, indeed, there was this connection. Um, and if you look at the dates, which are known for the maximum torture of uh, suspects who were tortured the most, then it fits in with the time scale for the invasion uh, in uh, um, 2003, uh, and not with any urgency in seeing if there was going to be a, uh, a repeat of 9-11 or some more limited follow-up attack. Right. And does that timeline, um, in terms of the torture, does it decline after 2003? No, it goes on. Um, for uh, afterwards, because I think once you've started things like that, they get their own uh, bureaucratic momentum. Uh, they still would have, was in their interest of the administration to prove a connection between Saddam and Al Qaeda, um, and uh, I think that has more to do with bureaucratic momentum. The fact that the people in charge had been outsourced to contractors who are making a great deal of money, uh, wanted to continue and said this is being very effective. Uh, although, as uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein uh, said um, after the report was issued, has gone on saying there's absolutely no evidence that this produced the sort of useful information uh, which the CIA claimed. So. Uh, I, but I think that um, there's been an evasion of looking at the um, justification for the Iraq invasion, uh, looking for confessions uh, from Al Qaeda suspects as a way of establishing this very unlikely link with Saddam. That this uh, has been referred to a little in the media, but generally. Uh, important though it was, and demonstrably was, there's been uh, not enough focus on it. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us and shedding light on this aspect of the report and the rationale for, for torturing. Um, and thank you for joining us on The Real News Network. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.